everyone, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host as always, Richard Tiemann. This is the always growing, ever expanding, award winning fan show. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you for joining me on this Thursday evening, another Thursday edition. It is the second episode of August, July, of course, in case you didn't know, in case you missed it, was a phenomenal month, to say the very least. I don't know if there's a better word for phenomenal, maybe AJ Styles knows, but until then, phenomenal will have to do. Uh, Once upon a time, January 2018 was the month to beat and it was the month to beat after steady increases with total plays of the show right whether it was people tuning in live it was people downloading it on one of the various platforms that we were on or if it was uh you know playing it on demand so you go to Spreaker and it has like where you can play it on demand you don't have to download it you just play a previous episode there so it's not live it's not downloaded it's on demand and so, steady, steady, you know, uh, we had, oh, geez, uh, August, September, October, November, December. They were all just like a few more and a few more and a few more. And then January, just bam, like it was such a big leap at the time. Like compared across the board to the rest of the previous six months, it was like, wow, like January was a great month. And so January was the month to beat. So we started out the year strong. And then February, it kind of kind of went down, and that's fine, you know, uh, f- shortest month of the year, okay. And then we were back up, not record-breaking numbers, but we were back up close in March, and then April kind of back down. Now, that was when I was on the road a lot, uh, BattleBots tapings, uh, the tour had started, so, you know, things kind of died down a little bit there, and then all of a sudden, bam! May, right? May had, uh, May was the new and new all time record holder. I mean, it obliterated January, and that was phenomenal. Uh, Favorite word right now. Word of the night, phenomenal. Then uh, there was uh, June, which came very close. I was like, can we do it again? June, nope, couldn't do it again, and that's fine. You know, that's it, it. You can't have a record breaking month every month. But then July happened, and it just said, hold my beer. <laughs> and July, whoo I mean, just crushed it. So July is the new all-time record holder for most plays, listens, downloads, on-demands, uh, subscriptions, whatever. And, and the funny thing is, something that I didn't even realize uh, until yesterday, as I was going through everything, making sure that uh, all the bases were covered, is that not only was July the uh, re- the new record breaking month for that but it did it without the help of SoundCloud my subscription had expired and I didn't even realize it so a whole month had gone by where people could not listen to new episodes so we're talking 4 weeks 3 episodes each so 12 episodes go by that people didn't know uh were available if you only do SoundCloud, and yet July still crushed it. I mean, we just got put on Spotify uh, about a week or two ago, so I can't say that Spotify made up for it. Uh, Always been on iTunes. Spreaker, of course, is where we broadcast from live. And then, of course, you can listen to it on demand there. The website, you can listen live or on demand there, the most recent episode. But it gets its previous episodes from SoundCloud. So you couldn't even go to the website and listen to, like, the the one from the night before. It was, it, like, stopped, like, the James LeBreton episode. So there was quite a few that I had to add. And then, uh, you know, iHeartRadio. So we had three platforms covered. And July still wrecked it. I, I love it. And so now that we're back with a renewed subscription to SoundCloud, we're on Spotify. We've got a full month uh, ahead of being on Spotify and not uh, late entry. Like I'm looking very forward to August. August is going to be a fun month because not only have we uh, started to launch, we announced uh, late last month, 
about midway through the fan show divisions, right? The Infinity Gauntlet. We're going to have, of course, this this right here, what you're listening to, what you see in the red and gold. Beautiful color combination, might I add. Uh, that's still going to be the home base. That is the centerpiece of the fan show, okay? The football logo, that will mean primarily sports, but the show itself, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, will still be aired under the banner of the original logo. But any... Uh, additional pieces like we have the mark morris comedy special that we do once a month that's going to be flying under the pop culture banner we've had uh interviews and specials with uh, musical acts that's going to be under the new music division banner uh we've had wrestling specials that's going to be flown under the uh, wrestling banner and then of course uh battle bots the robotics division. Um, it, the show is still going to do its weekly special, but any content uh, consisting of only robotics will be under the new uh, robotics banner. And then, of course, we have a uh, late entry, but by popular demand, the outdoors division. That will round out the six, uh, technically six different divisions. So you'll have the fan show which will now be primarily sports, which is what we talk a lot of on here. But now we're going to cover, uh, you know, the the other five. We're going to cover outdoors, pop culture, music, wrestling, and robotics uh, through the headlines. And then, of course, each episode is subject to its own special guest. But the main purpose of the divisions is so that everything has a home on the website. So August is the month of new content for each division. So you can start looking for those logos. You can follow them on Twitter right now. They're all available. They're all up and running, but the uh, outdoors division late entry, but getting some early love. Uh, In fact, my guest tonight, one of two is Brian Clum of Clum Dog Outdoors. He's going to join me. We're going on a fishing trip this weekend and I cannot tell you enough how excited I am about that. Look, I love fishing. I, I I love fishing and hunting, but fishing, I mean, as far as like a hobby, you need to, to get away to clear your head. You want to have some fun. You want to be competitive. Like fishing covers it all. Who doesn't love fishing unless you're some psycho animal rights person that thinks that fishing, even if it's catch and release, is like some type of animal cruelty. But it, this clearly isn't the show for you, okay? <laughs> but fishing is just awesome. And what sucks for me, what has sucked the last three years is that my busy season is the summer, which if you don't know about Spokane's seasons, there's two. It's winter and construction. And during the construction season, which happens to fall in the months of April, May, June, July, August, September, uh, because yes, winter does go October, November, December, January, February, March, sometimes April, that it's, it's just... It's tough to get out there when I'm on the road all the time. So uh, the help of Brian Clum and Bobby Brown, uh, I'm going to finally get to do some fishing. And yeah, sure, you know we're going to do we're going to have some great content for you for the show for the outdoors division. But I get to finally freaking fish, okay? So let's not overlook the the point of this whole thing is that I get to finally go and and hit the water. And and yeah, it's August. It's better late than never, though. That's my that's my whole thing. Uh, my other guest tonight, Robert Brown. Uh, he's defensive back, former uh, Spokane Empire player, and he's going to talk about how it feels to be on the hottest team in the NAL right now, the Maine Mammoths. Even if they're not in the postseason picture, they've certainly finished their season strong. They still got one game left to put a big exclamation point exclamation point on their season and possibly spoil uh, some seeding for others so we're going to talk to him uh, great episode for you though on this thursday evening i got Fozzie here in my lap he's trying to uh stay awake but he's he's kitty tuckered out so we're gonna go to the headlines let's do this thing And headlines, of course, brought to you by Ethan and the good people at Dynamite Enterprises. I think there's only two of them. So uh, Ethan is the one that I know. He's the one that I go through if I need something customized, if I need apparel, merch, or my logo on really anything. He's the one that does it. Uh, Go and customize your world with Dynamite Enterprises, and he's going to hook you up if you say, hey, I heard about you on the fan show. And for those of you lucky enough to have gotten yourself an official fan show t-shirt from this latest batch, uh, he's the man responsible. So those of you being like, these are so 
the the quality is so great. They're so soft. They're so awesome. Yeah, that's his that's his handiwork. Okay, so uh, you need to hit him up if you need shirts, custom embroidery, screen printing, uh, foam fingers, coasters, uh, banners, tablecloths, uh, polos, hoodies, t shirt, wh- whatever the hell you need done with your logo or artwork on it, he'll do it. Like he's just, where there's a will, there's a way, and trust me, there's a lot of will with him. So he's gonna find out. Uh, what it's going to cost to make it happen. And if you say the fan show told you, he might just be like, oh, well then, let's uh, let's drop this down a wee bit because fan show is fantastic. They're good people. Well, we try. But Ethan's good people too, so go and hit them up. They are sponsors of uh, unofficial sponsors. They don't even pay me for this ad spot, but I've just been so pleased with their product. I, I feel the need to reiterate each episode just how awesome Dynamite Enterprises are. So you can reach Ethan. Ethan at dynamiteenterprises.com. Everything's spelled out exactly how you would think. Ethan, E T H A N, and then at Dynamite Enterprises. So, headlines today uh, we mentioned yesterday Eric Decker. Oh, you know him. He's a friendly guy, right? He's been kind of a journeyman as of late. Uh, we've got an update. Uh, he was reported a sighting, Eric Decker sighting at Patriots. Uh, this last week and I said well that makes sense he's nearing the end of his career and he wants a ring so yeah I would I'd find myself at the Patriots too so him and the Patriots are signing a one-year deal I don't know how much it's worth I don't have the details here but Eric Decker will be a New England Patriot this season good for him I always thought he was kind of he's like Brandon Marshall ironically they've played together too that he was just never properly utilized but uh hey man he's got tom brady throwing to him now so life is life is pretty good uh and let's see lamar jackson is making his preseason debut tonight that's right uh happening in the next 15 minutes the pro football hall of fame game 2018 chicago versus baltimore if you're interested in that which uh, you know, I guess if Lamar is going to be starting, it's worth a watch, but it's going to be against a, not a good defense that they didn't even have the hall of fame game last year because this stuff got so just messy and complicated and, and whatever. So people finally get to wet their NFL whistle tonight. I, I'm not going to watch. I got homework to do. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's bad when you would rather do homework than watch football, but considering that not only is preseason horrible football and yes there is such a thing as horrible football uh but also it's the hall of fame game which is the worst of the horrible football uh, because it's like it's you know why would you want to send your best guys out there for a game that's literally just to be a game and so that uh yeah antonio brown day to day with undefined injury uh let's see here do uh, per the new NFL rule, bars hit on Aaron Rodgers last year would be illegal. God, they're protecting the quarterback so much these days. Like anybody that still likes to make that argument that, you know, Tom Brady is better than Joe Montana or even like a Brett Favre or Terry Bradshaw, like get out of here. Like there is so much done to protect the quarterback in today's NFL that like you can't tell me. That if the guys were actually allowed to like hit the quarterback and the quarterback was allowed to be hit, that they would be as good as they are. I just I don't buy it. I'm sorry. I'm a I'm I'm a traditionalist like that, and I'm only 32. <laughs> so it's yeah. What does that tell you? Hi, Fuzzy. Uh, Earl Thomas tells the Seahawks, "Pay me or trade me." Of course, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Uh, especially since Sherman went elsewhere, <laughs> found a new home. <laughs> within the division oh boy uh rams uh, donald's reps do not agree on the tds uh, on the dt's defensive tackles worth a uh, big surprise there ray lewis mosley is the best middle linebacker in the nfl you know it, there's a lot to be said about guys named mosley in football they're all pretty damn good to be uh you know if we want to get into that and then let's see. Let's click on this Earl Thomas thing. Earl Thomas tells the Seahawks, pay me or trade me. Kevin Patra from uh, around the NFL on NFL.com. Earl Thomas stands staunchly behind his message to the Seattle Seahawks, pay him or trade him. 
Writing for the Players' Tribune, Thomas elaborated on the demands that he posted on Instagram last month in which he asked the Seahawks to offer him an extension or trade him to a team that would be willing to commit to uh, the long term. Quote, I'm asking the Seahawks to do one of two things. Offer me an extension or trade me to a team that wants me to be part of their future, Thomas wrote. He later expounded on his stance. In the end, it's like I said, if the Seahawks don't intend on having me around for the long term, then I understand. And if they want to start over and rebuild, then that's their right. It's part of the business. It's not what I want, but I get it. All I ask, though, is that if that's the case and they don't want me anymore, just please trade me to an organization that does. Please trade me to a team that wants me so I can give my all to them for the rest of my career. So he doesn't want to be the journeyman. I don't even think he wants to play somewhere else. I think he just wants to be appreciated and compensated as such. I, it, as a 49ers fan, I don't see why you're not paying the man. Uh, I mean, it's, he's one of the last parts of the foundation that you laid there remaining in Seattle on the, on the whole team. Russell Wilson on the offense, sure, you could say Doug Baldwin, and then you've got Earl Thomas on the defense. I, I think you should pay him and keep him just because of that. Like you have that veteran leadership. Yeah, it could be a long road of rebuild, but why not? But it, the next team that he signs with will probably be the last team that he plays for. That's what it sounds like based on that. And I think that's, uh, he doesn't want to be a journeyman. He doesn't want to be that guy that gets picked up for a year, like an Eric Decker. And there's nothing wrong with what Decker did at all. No, but Earl Thomas doesn't want that to be the rest of his career. Uh, like Aaron Rodgers saying he wants to play for Green Bay forever. He will probably play for Green Bay forever. Same with Tom Brady in New England. And uh, so that's going to do it for headlines. We will, of course, cover the NAL when I talk to Robert Brown here in a minute. And we will get uh, some thoughts on the final week of the regular season in the National Arena League. So don't go anywhere. We've got plenty more Fan Show coming up right after this. You're listening to The Fan Show, your home for all things football and nonsense. My special guest tonight, Farouk. Farouk, welcome. He's no expert, but here's the thing. Football and nonsense is what he brings. Sports talk with a twist. It's the Fan Show. Do you know him as Kevin from the League? It is none other than very funny Steve Ranazisi. 99% of the population doesn't know who I am. But the 1% do, they yell and scream inappropriate things at me in public. Kyle Ray, Kyle, welcome. And I was like, wow, I think we just saw the whole Super Bowl, Phyllis. <laughs> it's like that scene in The Simpsons, like, why rent the movie? I just saw the best part. Funny man, Brad Williams. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I flew in just for your podcast. <laughs> I've heard about this podcast. I've heard it's fantastic. It's Mac and Farva, but they are my special guests tonight. Steve Lemmy. Kevin Heffernan. I was in Mexico for 10 weeks in a Speedo. Like, that's, uh, that, that was me going to work. I was putting on a Speedo. Like, Farva is the most fun to play, and it was a blast to do that again, to do Farva again. So then the makeup artist had to put Vaseline on your body, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and then put the powdered sugar on top of that. Is your name really Richard Siemens? Listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night on Spreaker.com or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, calling an audible. Robert Brown was not available at the moment. Could be a number of reasons. It's okay. We'll try again after my uh, other guest, who is available now. Uh, we grew up together. He was the star of Junior High Talent Show, and now he hosts and does his own outdoor guide service called Clum Dog Outdoors. It is Brian Clum. Brian, welcome. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude, I, I got to tell you, if you would have uh, done a poll uh, what, like 15 years ago of where a person like you and me would be at this point in our lives, I probably would have figured that you would have been the one hosting a, a show like this and I would have been like doing the, the outdoor <laughs> stuff, you know? It's, it's crazy how things change. <laughs> yeah, it is, absolutely. But it's cool. I mean, we're both doing our own thing. We're chasing our passions and, you know, that's really cool to see, you know, a guy that I grew up with that's you know, he's doing his own thing. You got your passions and your dreams and you're chasing those goals. And, you know, I'm kind of doing the same thing, just trying to stay positive and, and keep chasing the dream, you know, chase the passions. I, I got to tell you, though, you couldn't have picked like a better path to go down considering that, you know, uh, fishing for so many is, like, like I said earlier on the show, it's like that that perfect everything you know for like your your summer like if you're if you need to a, a getaway you know you you go fishing if you need to to you know have a little fun you go fishing if you want to be competitive at something that you consider a hobby you, you go fishing like it's it's the perfect storm of summer activity for people uh anyone can do it really but obviously you do it so well that you have your own thing now clum dog outdoors like how did that even come about where you're like you know i'm so good at fishing i should do this for a living <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it started out doing uh, walleye tournaments. So hey. I've been I've been fishing off the bank my whole life. It's just been something I've always done after work, after you know playing football as a kid growing up. Everything after that was always revolved around fishing and hunting. Um, and so I uh, fishing off the bank my whole life. I eventually bought a boat a couple years ago, and once I bought that boat, you know my eyes opened up. I was I was ready to hit the game and hit it hard. So I did uh, uh, the Northwest Walleye Circuit. Did a six tournament series. It was the first time doing it. I fished a lot of the tournaments with my brother because it was kind of a passion of his as well. Um, so, so doing the tournament series was a ton of fun. Uh, it was six tournaments out of 130 boats. We took 10th place overall in the points standing for our first year doing it. And so that was really cool. And that kind of, you know, that turned a light on for me. But, but one problem with that is I, I can't just target one individual species of fish. You know, I like to, my biggest thing is doing the research, uh, yeah. the biology, everything involved with all these if different individual species is what really I get a kick out of. So when it comes to ice fishing, I'm an ice fishing nut, and that's kind of what started the whole thing. Was I got a I got a GoPro for Christmas from the wife, um, and you know I, I was out ice fishing all the time. I wanted to show people that it's not a scary sport; it's a fun sport if you do it right and, and you approach it correctly. You know, you can have a lot of fun, and you can catch fish, and you can get other people hooked on it. You know, the biggest thing is trying to share the share the passion of the sport. You know, I don't I don't want the sport to be a dying breed. I, I want it to be something that continues on for a long time. And with the clum dog thing, you know, I got I got nephews in my family, and if it's if it's something I can't continue on with, maybe when they get older, they'd like to continue on and keep the clum the clum name going, the clum dog deal going. So it's it's always been revolved around family. It's been revolved around just the love of the sport. And that's kind of what really triggered me into into going a little bit further with it because I seen there wasn't a lot of guys locally that were, you know, filming and they, they weren't really showing the passion that they really have for it. And that was kind of my whole goal was to to really show people what I'm really nutty about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of that light bulb moment that, that you talked about uh, that a lot of people overlook is something that like – do people want to know like about this, like how to do this? And, and I got to tell you, from my experience, whether I'm on the set uh, down in L.A. for BattleBots or, or at another indoor game or at a Comic-Con, like people love the behind the scenes stuff. They love to know like what it takes to make something work, because all we see as fans is the, the finished product, right? The, the right. game on TV or the BattleBots episode or the you know, the, the cosplay as it's, uh, you know, the, the contest as it goes on, but we don't get really that inside look. And so for you to tackle ice fishing and just fishing in general with that behind the scenes, look that people love that stuff. They love getting, uh, what they feel is access to something that not everybody 
gets access to. It's kind of an exclusive thing. So I think you've definitely tapped into something uh, that a lot of other people would overlook. And then as a yeah. result, your product out there, the finished product, is very good. Uh, you mentioned it started with walleye fishing. And I got to say, 10 out of 130 is, is really good. Uh, I did love following your uh, ice fishing expeditions because you were hauling in some monsters. But now <laughs> um, that you've kind of covered several different species and, and different types of fishing do you have a favorite now Ooh, see that's a tough one that, and that's the hardest part that walleye was my favorite because that was a new species for me that was something where it came to the bottom structure the water temperatures the times of day uh the, the, there's so many different movement patterns of a walleye that it's a little bit different than bass fishing where when it comes to bass fishing you can look at a stump that's in the water and you can cast to that stump and you'll probably catch a bass every time so that's kind of what got me triggered on the walleye, but it's not my favorite species to fish necessarily. Now in the springtime, when it comes to early spring where there's the high water flows and the catfish are running, I really, really enjoy fishing for catfish. That was something I grew up on as a kid with my mom uh, on the Snake River down in Boise. You know, I got pictures of me in diapers holding catfish because that was just something that we did as a family growing up. So I, I would have to say maybe catfishing, you know, in the early spring where it's uh, you can go out after work and it's just getting dark and you can really target in on that species at that time of year. That that would probably have to be my favorite other than, um, you know, ice fishing and um, ice fishing. I just got into I got into it hard the last few years. And that's just something that really triggered me. It's it's intriguing because you have to fish one spot at a time and you have to know the bottom structure, you know, you're you're fishing in a hole that's six to eight inches and that's it. You can't cover water. You can't really do anything like that. So there's a lot of run and gun techniques involved with ice fishing that really intrigued me uh, to really follow that sport pretty heavily. And that's where I ended up, you know, getting hooked up with clam outdoors as a pro staff member with them. That was really cool. That was a big accomplishment uh, just because it's, there's so many different species that you can catch through the ice. And uh, I kind of figured out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have yet to be ice fishing, something that I definitely want to do. It's on the outdoors bucket list, obviously. Um, my dad pretty much raised me on downrigger fishing, whether it was the salmon run on the snake or, you know, uh, as a kid, time of my life that I can't even remember except for through pictures of, of Mackinac fishing at Priest Lake. And then yep. I fell in love with angling, you know, bass fishing, uh, trout. I've always wanted to pick up fly fishing, but that's like – that's almost an art in itself. That's like the chess game of the sports world is, <laughs> is uh, fly fishing. But, you know, it's funny that you say catfish or walleye. Um, and I, and I got to say, I, I despise catfishing because, one, they always swallow the damn hook. And, two, I <laughs> fun fact, I have been stung by a catfish. Those of you that don't know about catfish, yes, you can be stung by a catfish, and it hurts like hell. It really yes, does. it does. Yeah, they um, actually have a little bit of poison in the tips of their fins. That's where you get stung. Is a lot of people think it's the uh, the barbels, the whiskers. They think that's nope. what stings you, but it's it's the the fins. They're like bones sticking out of the side. Yes, it does hurt. Yeah, <laughs> I was time. I was fishing at a pond uh, that was uh, near my house uh, in Green Acres, and uh, it, damn thing swallowed the hook. Okay, so there's problem number one. Put the pliers in there, and you know you get it to a point where you think, okay, if you just one violent movement, it's going to jar that sucker loose. He's going to be free. You're going to be fine. Now I'm wearing tennis shoes at this point, uh, not oh, not no. Converse, <laughs> and and I, I I do the the one like get off, and it falls, and the thing goes through my shoe, through my sock, and into my foot, and I cannot describe the pain. Like just. <laughs> Wow. So for you, I mean, props to you for that being your favorite. But yes, uh, you can be stung by a catfish and it hurts. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had, yeah, I've been uh, stung. I've been sliced, you know, going fishing. I fish Hauser Lake a lot here in North Idaho. Um, and a few years ago, there was primarily bullhead catfish. And uh, a bullhead catfish is a small yellow belly. Uh, they don't really get much over, you know, 14 inches at the most. Yeah. But, you know, when you catch them, you're catching you know, 20 to 30 of them a night. So every time you take them off the hook and you go to throw them back in the water, they'll, they'll twist, they'll do the death roll and start cutting your hands up. And <laughs> it stings. <laughs> oh, it stings. <laughs> yeah. And uh, to put it in perspective, the sports fans out there that maybe for whatever reason, don't, don't do fishing. Uh, walleye, 
ice fishing and any any type of downrigger fishing, Mackinac, salmon, even the the big uh, you know river trout, lake trout. Uh, that's your soccer, your baseball, uh, your your golf. That's your long game. It's it's the long game because when when you get one, it could weigh you know anywhere from ten to probably fifty pounds, and that's yeah. that's worth your your whole trip right there. Soccer, uh, one goal, a uh, one goal score you know uh, that that's the game but if if you're a fan of the fast pace hockey basketball any kind of football then you're probably a fan of of angling which is bass uh crappie you know panfish a lot of that stuff because that's that's really the difference and and i used to go out and pick my favorite plug and just plug away you know and then i would mix it up but uh Always loved bass fishing. Uh, I went with uh, my cousin's boyfriend, who was like angler of the year a couple of times, and we were down in Tri Cities on the river. And he's got like this whole get up, this boat with sponsors plastered all over it, and had a blast. And he was telling me he's just like, well, we're gonna go smallmouth. We're probably gonna have to use this because it's what he's like. It's uh, it's okay. It's September. So and he's like, and what was the phase of the moon last night? And I was like, we're talking about fishing, right? Like- <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and that that's one thing that um, I don't know. It, a lot of people don't really understand that it's when you're going fishing, you're not necessarily just sitting there casting a worm and waiting. You know, a lot of people think fishing's easy. They don't really think of it as a competitive sport, like you were saying. And it really is uh, when it you know comes to smallmouth fishing it's the water temp it's the structure it's it's the approach that you take on it and every different species has that and if you're if you're competitive enough if you're willing to do the research like most people are on their sports on anything else you get tuned in you get better with practice you get you turn into a better fisherman the more you do it and it's the same thing with sports and everything else but it is competitive and that's kind of the approach that i took is going going for the walleye series doing that whole tournament and deal um, I, I had sponsors. I got a bunch of people locally that I'm really familiar with that own, own local businesses here. And they were really willing to help me out because that was one of my dreams was the fish a tournament series. And so I did that. But after I did that, I took a different approach and I, I wanted to be competitive in my sport in my own personal game, not necessarily competing with other people. So I talked to the sponsors and I said, what do you guys think about, you know, maybe switching over and doing a, you know, a video series and doing, uh, you know, the social media and going that route where it's still advertising for them. They still get the, the visuals and everything like that, but I get a target and I get to do the individual species that I want to go for throughout the different times of year. So being competitive in that sense really helped me out. And so I still have, you know, I still got sponsors on board. I got, you know, plenty of them, r and RV. I got Curly's wow. Hauser Junction, Giltner Tree Care, River City Pressure Washing. I'm doing a uh, freelance photography for Buck Knives, uh, Clam Outdoors, the ice fishing uh, I'm pro staff for them doing photography work for them and it's it's just really cool to be able to build up my own game basically turning my fishing game into an advertising business in order to to be competitive with myself and uh, the species that I try to target you know I love it I love it you and I are going to have a great conversation this weekend which uh, for those that don't know so uh, by popular demand we have added a six and final can't do any more of these damn divisions folks okay we've got a final one final entry outdoors division myself and Mr. Brian Clum of Clum Dog, we're going to be uh, getting some content this weekend. Uh, Priest Lake, a place that I practically spent my summers growing up, except uh, I can't remember the last time I caught a Mackinac, so that's going to be fun. We could get skunked, but I, I have all the faith in the world in Brian. And then Bobby Brown of All-Star Bass Fishing, him and I have a, a date arranged for a, another uh time this month and and so we're going to get some good stuff rolling i'm very excited about this particular venture because it's something that i didn't know if it was going to be an opportunity with the show when i started it and now it seems like it's going to be something that is uh very popular but uh brian congrats on all the success we're going to talk even more we're going to do some video stuff and uh what can i expect this weekend at priest lake with uh clum dog outdoors well it's, it's going to be a ton of fun man um I don't know how willing you are to get up super early, <laughs> but I'd like to, you know, we're going to get out there fairly early Saturday morning. Uh, we're going to go to the nearest beach. We're going to set up our camp because we're going to be beach camping this weekend. Um, so what's going to be kind of the whole outdoor experience. We'll be setting up our camp, beach camping. We'll go out in the morning. We'll fish for our Mac and I, we're going to be doing a lot of jigging. Um, usually this time of year, I don't do a lot of trolling for the Macs. So we'll be going out, we'll be jigging. Um, I have full confidence that we're going to be putting some good numbers in the boat. Um, and it's just going to be an outdoor deal. So we'll, uh, 
go fishing at lunchtime. We'll go back to camp, hang out, have a beer, do whatever we need to do, and then go back out in the evening, fish some more, you know, sleep in the tent, sit by the fire, and just have a damn good time. And that's what that's what the whole thing is about. Is it's having fun. It's showing people the, you know, the beauty of nature, the beauty of of things that's really been forgotten over the years by a lot of people. So it's going to be a blast, man. It's going to be a ton of fun. I'm super excited to take you out there. All right, man. Well, hey, I'm super excited. I just got goosebumps for with you describing. I mean, fishing and beer. It's like, okay, yeah, this is for my show. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, let, we can we can make this a work related thing too. Okay, so <laughs> right, that's my whole thing. Yeah, I'm gonna go out and go fishing, take people out, and get sponsors and get shit on board and have my own thing. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a ton of fun, man. All right. Well, I can't wait. We will uh, hammer out the details uh, probably as soon as I'm wrapped up with the, the show here. But, uh, hey, man, thank you so much for your time. I wanted to give people a little preview, some insight, and we will, of course, have more content after the weekend. But looking forward to it. We will talk soon, and thank you again so much. Yeah, absolutely, Richard. I really appreciate you having me on, being able to share my passion and my love of this sport. So, yeah, we'll get together, and it'll be a kick-ass time, man. I appreciate everything. All right. He is Brian Clum of Clum Dog, and we'll see you guys this weekend. Brian, have a great rest of your night. You too, buddy. Take care. All right, folks, we're going to jump right into it. Apparently, Mr. Brown's phone was charging, so we'll be right back with Robert Brown of the Maine Mammoths right after this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, one of my favorite defensive backs in the indoor game, currently residing in Maine for the Mammoths as part of the National Arena League on the hottest team in the league right now. (laughs) It is Burt Brown. How you doing, man? Man, what's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Doing great out here, man. Doing great. (laughs) Now, I remember I had you on earlier. There was some movement with you and your brother. You guys are on the same team now. And I remember watching week in and week out, and I'm just like, man, Maine, they're so close. They're right there. Like, you can't keep a good team like this down. And here you guys have rattled off four in a row, all against some of the best teams in the league. And it's it breaks my heart because it's just like, man, if this would have happened – God, even two weeks Man. earlier, it could be what for a, for the postseason. <laughs> but how how you feeling though, at knowing that you guys have have found your stride, that you're hot right now, even if it's not postseason appearance, like you still got to feel good about the way that you guys are finishing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, coach preaches it every day. Man, it's like he he comes out, make sure we focus up. You know, not worry about no rankings and not, you know what I'm saying. We have we have a lot of fun with the win streak and stuff like that. You know. But man, the the the, commod- the camaraderie out here, like man, the team is just like it's crazy, man. It's hard to explain. Um, it started off tough when I first got out here, you know. So um, at at that time, the team didn't have any wins when I first got here from Jacksonville. So you know, um, with a lot of a lot of the right pieces on one team, you know, a lot can change. A lot can change. So man, it's it's been a great feeling. You know, we've been working hard every game, play every game, like we still going to the playoffs. You know. And, and and you know it's a lot of veterans on the team, so uh, I, we knew it was going to start to put itself out there and show. You know, it's just a lot of people didn't know the roster we had. You know, so I think it's starting to show late in the season. But man, I wish we could have got a roller sooner. Yeah, man, like you said, coulda, shoulda, but hey, you know, it's it's nothing to hang your head about. I, I think the fact that you guys are choosing to continue to fight speaks volumes about not only that, that franchise, but <laughs> the individuals on the roster as well. Is, is there a moment or a point in time this season that it just clicked for you guys? Like, was it to something Coach said, something you guys did differently, or was it just <laughs> that moment where instead of, man, if we would have just got that, that last field goal, we would have won. And, and, and instead, you got that field goal, you know? <laughs> right, right. You know, uh, man, we, it, it's funny because we actually didn't change a thing at all from when we weren't, when we wasn't winning games. We got a couple new linemen, you know, and the main change was, was, was inserting my twin brother, Rob Brown, into the offense, I guess you could say. <laughs> man, ever since, you know, he, he came to the team and 
a couple more guys, man, the offense has been so explosive, and it really gave us on defense a chance to, you know, to show our true talent and show that we can really play with a lot of these teams in the NAL. So, man, that offense came a long way. You know, Coach Fuller and Rob helping us out a lot. Bane, Bane our quarterback, he's, he's, in, he's in great form, and it's, it's just, you know, we just wish we had a few more games, man, a few more games. <laughs> Well, I know that it sucks that you're not part of the postseason picture, but if I had to ask you if you had a team that you could pick to to think maybe might win this championship, do you have a, a favorite going in that you'd be cheering for? <laughs> man, I like us, man, to win the whole thing. <laughs> in the playoffs. <laughs> man, but uh, not really. You know, I'm kind of just being neutral right now. I'm trying to finish up the season right Uh I like to, we like to tell each other every week, you know, if they go into the playoffs, we we gonna be their test, you know. So <laughs> if a team, we gonna see if the team ready for the playoffs. We like to joke around a lot, saying that stuff, you know. But man, it, it's like with the, with the amount of games love, you know, we we just man, we push ourselves anywhere we can in practice and stuff. So man, you know, it's just uh, man, I'm neutral, but I'm leaning more towards uh, Carolina, maybe Carolina. Uh, you know, I got a lot of a lot of friends in Mass too, man. But you know, it's a lot a lot going on right now with 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 quarterback situations and injuries and stuff. So I'm, I'm gonna keep a close eye on it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, man. I was just gonna say, you know, I, I I bet Massachusetts and Carolina are are the Mammoths' biggest fans this weekend because. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, Jacksonville, they control their own destiny and they're going to go and, and they're going to go on the road and face you guys who you could finish this thing uh, on a five game winning streak, I believe would be the, the final tally and uh, and just wreck their their whole postseason hopes because uh, mass, <laughs> you know, they've got they've got Lehigh Valley and, and, and not to knock them. But let's be honest, you know, they haven't played their their best football this season. And then, of course, Carolina is going to have its hands full with Columbus. Columbus, but Columbus cannot be the number one seed. So Carolina, no. uh, there's not a whole lot that they can do other than win. But they got to hope that you know either a Lehigh upset for Mass or <laughs> or you guys to take down Jacks. But uh, how would that yes, feel yes, to, to finish with a win over the defending champions? Man, it'd be great. You know, um, we have a few guys on our team that was on that Jacksonville rock to begin the season so man it's just like you know you, you just you just you don't want you don't wish nothing bad on them and stuff like that but when you do get the opportunity to play against the team again you know it's it's a, it's a little it's a little more a little more a little more ump on you that week you know so it's like uh like i said now most of our whole secondary was in jacksonville at some point this year so it's 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 funny when you when you put so much hard work out you know and we take pride in our defense and, and it's starting to show it shows you know um Man, it's just it's it's been a fun ride, man. It's been a fun ride. It's just man, I wish we really had more time. <laughs> we came together so late, man. Yeah, but the point is that you did come together, and I know that this isn't like the NFL where one team can be pretty much the same year to year. But how how do you like it in Maine? Like, has this last run kind of won you you and your brother over? Like, would you go back next year if given the chance? Uh, Coach Fuller's been great, man. Um. He's, he's 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 been a great guy. Um, it's, it's been great, man. I haven't met a coach like him in in a couple seasons. You know, I I've been around the game for a while, well, at least the IFL game. So, <laughs> man, he's a he's a great guy, man. Um, he understands his players, you know, and he he he, he gives you that opportunity to to show, you know, he he he's really a great coach, man. When it comes down to the players and understanding his players and stuff like that, man. So I was real fortunate in, in hooking up with Coach Fuller this year, you know. Um, and also with Rob, you know, man. But Maine's been great, man. It's quiet for the most part, you know. Uh, lots of lots of lost out here, you know. <laughs> lots of lost, man. They they love the lost. I think we got a lost the fest this weekend or something. But man, 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 it's, it's definitely I would definitely recommend it, man, to a lot of my friends next year. You know, we it's a it's a close knit circle with with a lot of us. So. <laughs> Man, you never know, man. It could, man, it could be the new hot spot, man. Just, just be on the lookout. <laughs> <laughs> be on the lookout, definitely. Yeah, you guys are certainly secluded, but hey, you know, sometimes that can be your best friend because you don't want too many distractions. I know that the guys uh, in in Massachusetts when I was there, uh, you know, last week, 
it was uh, a lot of fun for them because there were all these places they could go out to afterwards. And I don't know what, what it's like in downtown, wherever you guys are specifically, but, uh, you know, I think the more that you guys can focus on your grind and your work, uh, probably the better. Obviously, you know, it, you can't argue with the streak that you guys have been on. But, hey, man, super happy for you. I wish, obviously, that you guys had – a bit in this postseason because uh, I don't think there's a team that's in the postseason right now <laughs> that would want to face you guys with how well you've done. Yes, so, sir, hey, man, yeah, man. big congrats on that. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. We, we definitely forced another beast rolling hot right now, man. I just wish we had a few more games and not built. You know, to show, you know, you want to show the league and show the NL that, that that you belong here. So, you know, it's good. I think a lot of our teammates we grab that that concept and. Man, it's been showing itself on the field, man. It's been, it's been a great one. <laughs> well, it's six and eight, and you guys could finish seven and eight, just shy of five hundred. Knowing that five of those wins uh, came from the last five weeks of the regular season, I think you guys <laughs> definitely belong in the National Arena League. Right. I look forward to what Maine has in store for next year, and uh, if if you guys are a part of it, right. great. But, uh, hey, I'd love to add to my ball right. collection. If you get your hands on a Maine Mammoth <laughs> ball, you and your bro need to sign it and send it my way because I need. Uh, I don't think yes, I have sir. one from you and your brother. Yes, sir. We, we got to get you one, man. We didn't have the logos all year. We got the logos late in the season, you know, when the wins start coming. So, <laughs> <laughs> we're we going to try to get you a ball, one of those one of those uh, Tusk Cup on it, man. Nice one, a good one. So definitely the Brown Brothers is going, you know, we haven't forgot about you, man. <laughs> I love it, man. Yes, well, well, hey, good luck against Jacksonville. Like I said, you know, you guys don't like consolation prizes, but I think finishing, sir. you know, five of your last five like that and a, a win against a, a Jacksonville team that won it last year, I think would be probably the best that you guys can do and, and certainly nothing to, to hang your head oh, about. Yeah. So go out there and get exactly. it, my man. Definitely, definitely, man. We appreciate it, man. No no better way to go out, you know, having the last game of the season, man. <laughs> it's going to be a good one, man. We're looking forward to it. All right. Well, hey, man, you tell your brother I said hello. Give him a hug for me. I miss we'll you guys. We'll You're so far away <laughs> in Maine, but, uh, yes, you know, if you guys are back in yes. Maine next year, I'll definitely make that trip because I've never been there before, and that would be the furthest that man, I've ever we gone. We got to get you out here, man. We got to get you out here, man. Got to. <laughs> now you you tell yes, Rob sir. Storm, you tell him, hey man, we want we want the fan show in the league next year, and then we'll make that happen. Man, Rob, great, Rob, great, Rob, great, man, those guys are great, man. I own, I, I love them all. You know, they they show they took us in with open arms, man. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> will tell them put that word into their ear. For real, man, you can definitely see your face. I had be great. All right, he I is. Need, I need give me a chance to get that belt, my hands on that belt again. <laughs> ah, that's right, man. The first ever fan show player of the game, Burt Brown <laughs> of the Maine Mammoths. Yes, hey, man, you take care of yourself and you have a good last week, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You too. Same you. Always great hearing from you, my man. All right, you take care, man. Good. Have a good night. Yep. You too. Thanks. All right, folks, that's going to do it for Thursday. That's going to do it for this week. Uh, two great guests. So glad that they could uh, make it happen on the show tonight. Uh, Bert always gives me a little scare like that when he's got to be on. But Brian Klum crushed it. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of media like this, but uh, I could not be more excited about what the weekend has in store for us up at Priest Lake. A gorgeous place. If you guys ever get the chance to visit Priest Lake, like Idaho talks a big game when it comes to Coeur d'Alene, but man, if you want to see just pure beauty in lakefront water form that's just, you're in the thick of nature. Your cell phone might not even get reception and it's still 2018. Go to Priest Lake, alright? Coeur d'Alene can have its street fair and its downtown Sherman Avenue and, and its resorts and its casino, but man, if you want if you want to get away and if you want to just I, it's hard to describe because uh, it's it was such a big part of my childhood, and I never pass up an opportunity to go up to Priest Lake. If you guys find yourself in northern Idaho, it's uh, just below the Canadian border, and it is B-E-A beautiful. I mean, fishing, boating, just hanging out on the beach, like, just do it. Like, if you're in the area, do it. Like, if you have to pick between Coeur d'Alene and Priest Lake, pick Priest Lake. <laughs> I can't can't say enough about it. So big shout out to Brian Klum. Uh, the dude crushed it. 
and I, like I said, very excited. We got plenty of outdoor content coming your way. We're going to do some uh, filming this weekend. Hopefully catch some fish for you. My God, that would be great, wouldn't it? Just thinking about it. It's just like, oh, I get, I get to go fishing. I get to go fishing. BattleBots tomorrow night. Don't forget, we are back. And they have announced the Desperado Tournament, which for those of you that are not following them, on instagram or on any social media uh, you should be ashamed of yourselves so BattleBots desperado tournament is as follows so we have lockjaw versus kraken in the first round valkyrie against hypothermia lucky versus gemini and gigabyte versus double dutch you win three you're in the tournament number 16 seed so win 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 and you're in if you want to put it that way but man i I gotta tell you when i when i saw this i never in a million years would have thought that lockjaw gigabyte and even valkyrie would find themselves in a desperado flash tournament i mean those are bots that you'd think would be fighting for what seed they're gonna get not just to be in not just to be a seed you know so uh, Don Hudson's got his work cut out for him. I could see him taking it, but man, you got to give it to Valkyrie. Uh, I think they're a very underappreciated bot. In fact, I had some, I had the privilege of talking uh, with one of their members, and we got that video content coming for you as well. So robotics, we've got you covered. Okay, the robotics division, battle bots. Yeah, we're gonna have some great content coming your way in the next couple of months. Uh, Desperado tournament tomorrow night on the Discovery Channel. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, set your alarms, set your DVRs, whatever you got to do, just don't forget. Then Saturday, we got National Arena League, all right? So we're talking sports now, football, and we have the reigning, defending National Arena League champion Jacksonville Sharks. They are taking on the Maine Mammoths. The Mammoths of Maine, Saturday, kickoff is 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. The Lehigh Valley Steelhawks taking a trip to uh, Worcester, Mass. They're going to try to take on some Pirates there. Same time for that. And then finally, we've got uh, another great game, Columbus Lions against the Carolina Cobras. This one, uh, there's a lot of meaning, but there's not a lot of meaning as far as the postseason goes. That All eyes are going to be on that main Jacksonville matchup because if Jacksonville wins, they're the number one seed. If they should make it to the championship, they host. Plain and simple, done deal, signed, sealed, delivered. But if Maine upsets, if Maine ends this season five in a row on one of the hottest streaks in the indoor game, then now we're looking at Mass and Carolina. Carolina would need, I believe, Mass to lose to Lehigh Valley, which that's a tall order. Sorry, Lehigh Valley, nothing against you guys. You got Patrick Ryan as your QB. I, I, all the love and respect, but man, you know, you got to find the win column. Maybe this is the, the time. Uh, Mass will be without starting quarterback Sean Brackett, so it's important to note that. But their backup has had a full week of reps. So uh, the defense is what has gotten Mass through so much this season. Uh, will they step up and be able to do that when they need it right now? Carolina, though, it's more out of their control than in their control. But Billy Back does not shy away from a challenge. He said on social media earlier this week, it doesn't matter where we go or who comes here. The, the, the focus is still the same, and that's to win. And then, of course, uh, I don't believe there's any, like, big movie premieres coming out. Uh, there's the Coeur d'Alene Street Fair. I guess that could be pop culture because uh, the first annual Lake City Comic Con in Coeur d'Alene coming up in October. And then, as far as music, go and check out MXPX and Muse. Muse doesn't know how to write a bad song. Uh, Muse's newest single, Something Human, is fantastic again the word of the day phenomenal so we're gonna up it from fantastic to phenomenal and the wrestling uh, i i gotta say this look i love charlotte flair she's been a guest on the show she is fan nation alumni okay so huge respect to the queen charlotte and I, I say that because I know that what happened on SmackDown is nothing to do with her. It's all creative. I think it's a dick move of creative to throw her in the mix, make it a triple threat, Carmella and Becky Lynch, with how hard Becky has worked. Now, I don't know if that's alluding to a storyline that we'll see play out after SummerSlam, but it's just kind of a dick move. I cannot wait for AJ Styles and Samoa Joe. Really can't. I, I would love to see The Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro back in the tag team mix. But um, I want them to stop 
bringing great NXT talent to the main roster because they're failing miserably at doing that. Uh, Finn Balor, Asuka, uh, it's just once they got to the main roster, it's like they did nothing with them. And they're going to be out of their primes before you know it. And they're going to be playing off nostalgia, having weak title runs and, and limited appearances. So uh wwe needs to get freaking act together uh and that was a poll on the fan shows wrestling division twitter page uh at fan show underscore wrestle who is the most underutilized superstar on the main roster right now balor the miz oscar or bobby Roode. uh for me that's a tough call now the miz and daniel bryan feud we're finally getting that but not for wrestlemania it looks like SummerSlam. but balor really you're gonna have him feud with baron corbin Asuka, you're going to have her lose a lot since ending her streak. And Bobby Roode's going to be irrelevant uh, pretty much since going to Raw. I just, it disgusts me. So anyway, that is going to do it for this Thursday episode. Follow on Twitter at Fanshow Official. Like on Facebook. We're getting very close to a thousand. That's facebook.com slash Fanshow Official. And you can follow along on the Instagram and Snapchat, simply The Fan Show, your home base for all things football and nonsense, and The Fan Show in fin- Infinity Gauntlet divisions. That is TheFanShow.com, a relaunch coming in August. We're going to have some great content for you. And if you aren't able to listen live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on Spreaker.com or TheFanShow.com, then simply subscribe in any form uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. We've got you covered. Big thank you to the BattleBots official Facebook page for sharing last night's episode, which was a great one. Derek Young joined us. If you missed that, go and get caught up. You got all weekend to get caught up on all things football and nonsense and much, much more. Nonsense and beyond. So go do it. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his one player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.